So Sharon has a speech entitled, How Do I Love Thee? And it's a five to seven minute speech. So thank you, Maura. Um, Sharon O'Neill is, I think it'd be fair to say, the most distinguished Toastmaster in this uh, club. She's also the 2017-2018 Toastmaster of the Year in District 71, which I think is quite enough achievement to introduce her with. And with the speech entitled, How Do I Love Thee? Sharon O'Neill. How do I love thee? Let me count the ways. I love thee to the depth and breadth and height my soul can reach when feeling out of sight for the ends of being an ideal grace. I love thee to the level of every day's most quiet need by sun and candlelight. I love thee freely as men strive for right. I love thee purely as they turn from praise. I love thee with the passion put to use in my old griefs and with my childhood's faith. I love thee with a love I seemed to lose with my lost saints. I love thee with the breath, smiles, tears of all my life. And if God choose, I shall but love thee better after death. Really? Really? What does that even mean? Those are just words. What does a love like that look like? How does it behave? And more importantly, how does it feel to be loved like that? Fellow Toastmaster, to be fair to Elizabeth Barrett Browning, it is almost 200 years since she wrote that particular song. Modern love, in my experience, is different in its expression. And I'd like to share with you one particular take on it. The Five Love Languages by Gary Chapman. The basic tenet of Gary Chapman's book, Five Love Languages, is that everybody generally has their own primary love language for giving and receiving love. It may be the same language for giving and receiving love, or it may be different. What matters is that we show love in a way that makes sense to us. But if it's not in the same love language of the person we're loving, then they may not necessarily feel how much we love them, no matter how deep or genuine our love is. It's as if you're speaking some English to someone whose primary language is Eskimo. If someone in a romantic relationship doesn't speak the primary love language of their partner, then their partner may feel unsatisfied in the relationship because they're not being loved in the way they need to be loved. And it gets confusing because each person in the relationship is loving the other person the best way they know how. Yet neither of them are feeling loved. And each one of them then feels they have the legitimate right to say, but you don't love me. You, you don't show me that you love me. Understanding your partner's love language and acting accordingly will fill their love tank. The love tank analogy is a metaphor that Gary Chapman uses to describe simply how loved somebody feels. Like the gas tank in a car, our lives run best and we are happier when our love tank is filled and being consistently topped up. The alternative is running on fumes and getting burnt out. Communicating consistently with another in their primary love language will fill up their love tank, help them feel loved in the way that they need and keep them committed to the relationship. Now, we all come to relationships with different experiences, different childhoods, different beliefs. It's highly likely that we'll end up in a relationship with somebody who has the same primary love language as us. So what it means is that loving someone in their primary language is a conscious choice. Identifying 
learning, and consistently communicating in your partner's primary love language is an act of love in itself. Because you're doing something that doesn't come naturally to you. So you're doing it for them. What are the five love languages? Well, one of them is words of affirmation. And what that means is that you feel most cared for when your partner is open and expressive in telling you how wonderful they think you are, how much they appreciate you. Another love language is acts of service. This is the doing part in a relationship. And it's your partner offering to the kids so that you can go to the game or doing the stuff you really hate doing, like cutting the grass or taking the bins out. Another obvious love language is physical affection. And that's the full spectrum from the pat on the shoulder as you're walking past your partner to the warm hug, the kiss, and the full spectrum of sexual intimacy. A fourth love language is quality time. And that is being together, being fully present and engaged in the activity, no matter how small it is. And that means putting down your phone, putting away the laptop and giving your partner your energy and attention as well as your company. And the fifth love language is gifts. And that's a very simple, obvious one. It's choosing the right gift, taking the time to choose it or create it and spontaneous gift giving for no reason at all just because it's Wednesday. Now if you want to learn more about the five love languages the book is easily available. It comes in many iterations now. There's the five love languages for singles, for men, for women, for those in the military, for children, for teens and it's well worth reading. It's a very easy read and who knows? you might be able to identify your own love language and significantly improve relationships in your life. What the hell has any of that got to do with effective coaching pathways? Well, as a coach, it's my job to help my clients to identify why they're feeling stuck are unfulfilled in their lives and to help them accelerate their own transformation. And I have found that often what's going on is a very simple, unmet emotional need. And if I can help my clients identify what those needs are, help them identify their own language and the love languages in the significant relationships around them, it's amazing the difference it makes in people's lives. If I can use that to help my clients, then that's learning worth pursuing. And who knows? I might even learn something about myself. Mr. Toastmaster. <laughs>